Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Um, today's webinar is about collaborative mapping for urban practitioners, and it's a pleasure to have you all here. Hi, everyone who's writing in the chat. So this event is co-organized by All Things Urban and FELT. Uh, my name is Naila Sanyur. I'm a close collaborator at All Things Urban, and I will be moderating today's session. Um, so a quick introduction, who are we? All Things Urban, uh, first, we connect over 65,000 urbanists with jobs, educational opportunities, and organizations. And with our platform, our curated newsletters, and our events like this one, we bridge the gap between professionals, skilled professionals like you, and organizations uh, and entities shaping the future of our cities. And this event is co-organized in collaboration with FELT. FELT is a browser-based tool to create and share maps, and it's setting new standards in mapping workflows for urban practitioners. So FELT, just a little bit about them and the tool, FELT has a very intuitive interface and powerful tools for visualization and analysis, and it helps you create, annotate, and share maps and design proposals. And additionally, it offers seamless integration with QGIS for advanced uh, spatial analysis and decision making. So if you're an urban practitioner, uh, whether you're an architect, an urban designer, or a transportation planner, you can find felt very useful to seamlessly conduct um, site analysis, urban studies, uh, conditions assessment, and present your work to your clients and teammates. So we're going to get into all this in a bit. Um, I will share the link uh, to felt's website in the chat. Uh, hi for everyone who's writing in the chat. It's good to see everyone saying where you're coming from. Um, so as you get settled, uh, I want to let you know before we start that this webinar will be recorded and we will send a recording in a follow up email for everyone who registered to the event, whether you're here in the room or not, uh, you will receive the email with the recording and you'll be able to um, follow this um, webinar later. Uh, you may be familiar everyone now with how Zoom functions, obviously, but as a reminder, you have in this webinar the option to write in the chat section, in the chat where everyone's writing now to say where you come from, so that's great. But you also have the Q&A section, which we'll be mainly using in the last part of the webinar. Um, so there is where you need to put your specific questions, and we'll get into that later. Um, that's very nice to see everyone coming from so many different parts of the world. So thank you already. I'm saying hi from Madrid. Anastasia is saying hi from Berlin. And Juan Pablo will present himself and he's saying hi from Chile. Um, that's right. <laughs> and now that we're all settled, um, I will kickstart the official introduction of why we're here actually today. Um, so we're up for an exciting discussion on collaborative mapping for urban practitioners. Uh, we were absolutely sold out for this event. Uh, hundreds of people were registered, and we look forward to give you a lot of uh, information and useful insights uh, to bring back um, to your projects and your organizations. So just a week ago, as we were preparing for this, we reached out to our All Things Urban community on LinkedIn with the following question. So what is your biggest challenge with collaborative urban projects? Um, more than 200 people responded, and the result of the survey um, speaks loudly. 60% uh, of you think that stakeholder coordination is actually the biggest challenge. And that goes way above shared data access or any technological barrier. So this clearly highlights something that we need to look at. So how do we collaborate in a better way? And today we're going to dive deeper into one specific aspect of collaboration with stakeholders, which is through collaborative mapping. And FELT has developed this tool, which can bring essential improvements to the way we approach working on urban development projects with diverse stakeholders. So we'll dive deep into that in a moment. Um, and today, as you may see with me in the panel, uh, along with Anastasia Sogroslova, who is CEO and founder of All Things Urban, we also have our guest speaker, which is uh, Juan Pablo Corral. Uh, Juan Pablo, I will introduce you in a minute, but we, with you, will explore the tool's ability to engage stakeholders, stream, streamline data sharing, and basically simplify mapping and this technology for urban practitioners. But also beyond the tool itself, we want to talk about 
um, the skill set of collaborative mapping and how you can use it uh, in your careers, uh, whoever is in the audience today. We want to use the skill set of collaborative mapping as a boost in your career as urban practitioners. I want you to get back with actionable insights uh, for your projects and organizations. So Juan, I'll get to introduce you now. Um, here's a quick bio. Uh, Juan Pablo is Feltz Manager for Urban Planning and Community Development. Juan holds a master's in science in city design and social science from LSE, the London School of Economics. Uh, Juan, you have extensive professional and academic experience across the UK, the US and Latin America, and your expertise encompasses urban design, urban planning initiatives, GIS consultancy projects in the real estate sector, urban research studies for both public and private sector across multiple countries. I'm going to share Juan's um, LinkedIn in the chat so you can drown him with messages later. Um, and before giving the floor to Juan, I want to let you know how the session will go. So in the first part, um, we'll have a um, presentation, approximately half an hour, where Juan will be presenting um, the tool and how it works and giving a practical case study. So you're going to get really into how it all works. Um, while Juan is presenting, I invite you to post your questions in the Q&A section, preferably the Q&A and not the chat, because this will help us track your questions. I will collect them and we'll have um, um, some a selection of some of these in the end. And after the presentation of Juan, we'll have the Q&A part. You can like the questions and vote them up for the ones you prefer or you agree with. And we're finally joined by Anna Savina in the audience. Uh, Anna is not on the panel with us, but Anna is community and content manager at Felt. And she'll be supporting us if uh, you need any specific, uh, if you have any specific question about Felt. So Anna will also be answering the Q&A. And without further ado, uh, further ado, Juan, the floor is yours. Yeah, um, thank you, Naila and Anastasia. Uh, many thanks for, for this opportunity. And well, as you just mentioned, I'm Juan Pablo Corral. I'm Felt's manager for urban planning and community development at Felt. And what I would like to do today is show you like a why Felt is a sort of like an all-in-one tool for urban practitioners. And I will argue this based on my experience, obviously, but not, but not only because of my professional experience, but also because before joining Felt, I was a regular user of the platform uh, that was looking for ways to enhance my work and add more value to my outputs for my uh, work in general. And basically, this is how I found Felt. And then I started as a, um, uh, I joined them like as an employee today. So just like a quick summary of what we're going to see uh, today, I will start like talking about my journey a bit, like how I moved from architecture to uh, to being like an urban designer and GS consultant, like at that journey. And also I would like to discuss like uh, based on this experience, a few pain points and workflows that I think you all have experienced and how felt can solve them. Then I will move to our platform. I will show you a few use cases and I'll share like uh, some maps and then we'll go, as you just said, Naila, to the Q&A part. So let me share my screen to start with this, to the with the presentation. So please, can you confirm if you see my screen, Naila, is it? Perfect, thanks Juan. Okay, good. So, okay, let, let's get started. So, first of all, um, as I just mentioned, I would like to talk about a bit like about my journey, like from being like a, an architect to a spatial data analysis analyst. So, first, I'm an architect from Chile. And I'm in Chile at the moment, uh, joining the session remotely. And I study, studied at the Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile. And also I had some research and practical involvement with teams and in the US uh, doing research projects for the Harvard GSD. And also after that, I worked with at Avalos and Centrisich uh, doing mainly mixed use projects in China. And basically it was like a, my first approach to cities from being an architect to have some kind of experience uh, with cities. And after that, I moved to the UK and as you mentioned, Naila, I did like a program at the 
LSE about cities. And I think that it was like a turning point uh, for me because after that I moved like uh, with all my experience to the city or being like an urban practitioner, like a more related to GIS, urban planning, urban design to this world. And then I joined felt almost eight months ago where I'm leading this uh, area about urban planning and community uh, development. So basically what I've been doing from the last six to seven years is producing maps. I will say hundreds of maps for public, private and public sector, real estate, research, urban studies and more. So if we see those to the left are for uh, assessing potential for redevelopment in a heritage area in Santiago de Chile, or if you go for those to the right, are for a tall buildings study. I, we did as, me as part of US uh, in London for Tower Hamlets, where the question was where we should densify, how we can densify, and why we can densify certain areas and others uh, we shouldn't. And based on this experience, what I realized was there are like a three main pain points that can help us to move from like a from uh, from working with maps like a from good to great and there are like a three points that I would like to mention today that I will explain deeper uh, now but the, those are related to first like a working with different scales secondly working with different workflows like how we work together in the this urban environment and third, it's about communication, how we can work together like a work, while working with urban projects or archi architectural projects with that have like a, a bigger scale. So first of all, about scales, what I would like to mention here is that, as you all know, we work at different scales. It can be from the S scale, like a more related to architecture, or to the XL scale, which is maybe like a regional planning. And the point here is that we all use different softwares that for instance, architect ar architects and urban designers might be more likely to use AutoCAD, Vectorworks, Illustrator, Google Maps or others. And then if you move to the Excel scale, you might be using some GIS and AGOR or Google Earth. And the point here is that this way of working uh, brings like a, a separation between professionals that are obviously related. It's quite difficult to move from us. It's quite difficult to detach aside from what is happening uh, within this neighborhood or within this neighborhood to the city scale. So what I think the problem is here is that we need for a tool that can help us all professionals like uh, to work together. I mean, not work together uh, using the same tools, but at least having a common workspace where you can share material and easily between these uh, professionals, because all these scales are essentially interconnected. And secondly, about workflows, uh, you might have noticed that when you send like a proposal to a client or you get an agreement to work on, on a study or, or a, a, an urban research study or like a master plan or, or whatever, you may have like an inception phase, then you will have like a site analysis or baseline stage. Then you will move to like a, a draft document for this proposal and then a final report. So it looks something like this, like a quite linear. But in reality, what's happening with our projects is that you can have like a kind of starting point, but the way that you get to the final part to the end, it, it looks like a more like this. It's very, it's like a back and forth process where first you will need to start with data collection, doing some quick checks to the data you've got, preparing some draft like a plans, annotate on your maps, prepare presentations, send like a, this draft document. At some point you will need to come back because you've got feedback and prepare new maps and more. And even when you finish like a project, when you get to this point, you might think that, or sometimes this, final part might be the starting point for a new project. So, and normally what's ha what happens is that when you, when, the, when you finish a project, all this material, it's quite difficult to share with this new practice that will start a new project on top of what you have done before. 
And the third point, it's about communication. And we have this conventional approach for our projects where you have like a professionals that can be, let's say an architect or a designer that they have like a client. And between them, you have some communication patterns that are used for feedback, to, for sending reports, inquiries, and more. And basically what happens in reality and that makes some communication patterns quite inefficient, it's that our communication patterns are varied, diffuse, and dynamic. So let's say you are an urban planner or urban designer that you have like a leading role with a client. You will be working with GIS consultants, architects, transport engineers, and they all will send you material, let's say plans, PDFs, a shape files or geo package to you that you need to collect and then send to your client. And normally this process is quite inefficient and it's also quite difficult to get feedback from your client. And that's a point that I will show you later that felt can also solve. So there are like a three main points that I would like to discuss and that I will show you how felt can solve this. The first one is about scales, secondly, workflows, and the third one is about communication. And the thing is that when you see alternatives, let's say other softwares, uh, you might notice that they are good at one or two things, but not at all. And what I would like to show you now uh, by using our platform is that Felt can solve, or that can help you to solve all these problems within the same platform. Because first of all, it's really great to work with different scales. Secondly, you can have multiple workflows from having uh, feedback on your map from sharing this easily to uh, colleagues or clients and also it's quite easy to share like uh, with other people and so this is like a the quick introduction and i would like to now move to our platform to discuss these three points about the scales workflows and communication patterns so let me just move to to this map where that is our starting point. So Naila, does it look right? Okay, great. So first of all, I would like to share this map with you. So I will copy this URL and then you will have access to this map very easily. Uh, where's the chat? So I will put this here. I will send this to everyone. So all of you can get access to this map. And so I see that people is coming, which is very nice. I can see you all getting access to our map. And I will recommend you to, if you go to the top left part of your screen, you can sign up for Felt. And then I will recommend you to duplicate this map. And then if you want, you can share this with your team or friends. If you go to the top right uh, part of your screen, here you can add emails for like a collaborators or friends that uh, missed this uh, webinar. And I will recommend you to do this. I can give like a minute or, or something so, so you can do this and then we can come back to the session because I put here my contact details. So if you want, well, you all have like a, a felt a contact, but also if you want to direct like a question, like a more specific, please feel free, feel free to do this. But also I put together a few links here, which is for, links for yes data sources around the world so if you click here you will get access to a map with different data sources around the world and also to our youtube channel so you can get access to different uh, educational materials about essentials about felt which is a series where can help you to understand how to use our platform also about transformations that i will show you uh, later today and also content about felt plus qes so and finally, also some customer stories from Icon and Alta Design that they are using Felt for different professional purposes. So let me start by showing you how I can, I will do this. So I will bring my slides so you can also get access to them um, if you duplicate this map. So I just wrote this, uh, the slide, so please, see how easy it is to bring the slides to my map that they are uploaded to our map and they will appear here 
So please duplicate this map so you can get access to, to this. So let me make sure it's there too. Okay, so there are the slides. I will copy the others. So please take a look at them so you can get access to my slides later. So here, just copy them. And then you see how fast they are being uploaded on our map. So let me start with this use case that we're going to see today. So first of all, I will talk about like a scales and different workflows. And let's think that you need to do like a baseline analysis for, uh, for a site and answer the following question, which I think it's quite common for you if you're working as an architect or urban designer. And someone asks you to know if there is like a, some brownfield land within uh, or site, a site that you will be developing uh, afterwards. I must say that we're uh, using Alice and Morrison like a material to show this example because we're working in London in the Olympics Parks uh, site. So let's uh, start with this. So first of all, I would like to show you how you can bring a file from QGIS to Felt. Then I will bring like some uh, 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 layer about boroughs uh, for context. And then I'll be, I will bring this brownfield land uh, shapefile from a server and do some transformations to get this um, question answered. So first of all, if I go to QGIS, you might be familiar with this. If you go to plugins and then manage plugins, you will be able to find a plugin that will allow you to work in QS and export layers or even projects to your felt map. So if you install this, you will be able to go here, you do double click, you can export your layer to felt. And if you select your workspace to felt, here's my map. And I want to bring this layer from QGIS to felt. I just press, press add to felt and the layer will be appearing here in just like a matter of seconds as you see here. This is our site. Let's say we're working in, in London, as I just mentioned, in the Olympics parks, and that's our site for a new proposal that we are working on. So in just a matter of second, our layer has appeared with our site, which is here, if you can see that. And then the question is, how we can first contextualize our site, like a, where it is, like a, which boroughs are next to our site. And then we need to figure out if there are like a, some brownfield uh, land within our site. So what we're not gonna do first, I would like to just change the style here to put known so I, I can have just like a, the boundary line of my uh, site, as you see here, I just have the, the red line, I can change the stroke very easily. I will put that. And then I will bring a few shape files for context. So I will bring this one. I will bring this geo package. Just, I will just drag and drop directly to my map. And then Felt will recognize immediately that it has some special uh, data attached to this file. And then I will create this data layer, and this will appear, appear in a matter of seconds. You can put this down so I can contextualize my, my site. And also what they would like to do, so you see that the layer has appeared. And then I can also do some work here to categorize my, the layer that's using like a, like the borough, the name or the name of each borough. So it's our Hamlet, Newham, Hackney. And then we realize that our site is part of three different like a boroughs. I can also add a, a legend here. If you go here, which will be a label. And something very nice about felt is that I just press like add a label and it will recognize the most like a likely field to use. In this case, it immediately recognized that name was the one I wanted to share. So you can see the name of each borough here. And then if we continue with the with this task that we need to answer this question, it was about how we can 
how we can know if there is like a some brownfield brown, brownfield land within our site. So then what we're gonna do is to get this layer. In this case, we're gonna go to this link. So and then we go to this London data store where we can get different data sets. And this one is specifically for like a brownfield really like a register. And obviously you can download this as different uh, data formats, let's say CSV, your package and others. But in this case, what we would like to do is to get this map directly from the server. So we don't need to download the file, but, but we're gonna use a URL just to upload this directly to my map. And what they're gonna do here is to go here because this is a link to the web mapping service. I just copy this, I come back to my map, command B, and which is very nice is that it automatically recognizes that this link has a special data attached. So my layer will be uh, uploaded here. So let's wait for this to uh, come. It's being uploaded. It's very quick as you, as you see here. And the brownfield layer will appear. And in this case, the brownfield is for all London. So all around London, this layer. It's being uploaded, so it's taking like a few seconds. And what we can do for context is that, let's say we need to share this with a, a colleague. So I can just copy and paste this text and I can use one of our annotation tools to have a quick reminder of what are the brownfield sites, the, the brownfield layer, what it includes. So it's just for context for for my colleague, if I share this map later. So what we have here is first a layer with our brownfield. I will rename this with our brownfield land. And we have our site as a shapefile and we have our borders. And what we wanna know is if there is any brownfield land within our site within this red, red uh, boundary. And what we're gonna do also is to share this with, let's say a colleague, because he's asking this uh, to you or let's say a client. So to figure out that, I think it's obviously pretty obvious that this site is part of that, but we're gonna get like a, maybe a new layer for sharing this with other people. So something which is very nice, uh, like a from felt is that you have this, part here, which is transform, which is basically all the spatial analysis tools that we have uh, in our software. So if you go here, you can use, let's say, at the intersection between shape files. And in this case, what we're going to know is that it can create new features from like a site where it overlaps with a brownfield land. And which is very nice is that it can give you a preview of what you're going to get later if you use this tool. So it gives you this polygon directly here that you can get this and then you will get like a new layer that will show only this uh, polygon which is within our site boundary. It's getting there. And also something interesting that you can do is that let's say we're gonna answer the same question. So you have two different ways of doing this. If you get here, you will get all the data attached to this uh, polygon. So you can get the object ID is 1791. And something that you can also do is to go to this uh, layer and we have a filter option here, which is very nice because you can add filters to get a specific data, but at the same time, you can also create new layers based on these filters. So I am gonna use a filter and I'm gonna use object ID that was the one we just saw. And I will press this and with, and it will re immediately recognize that this ID was for this polygon. And then I can press done. And then I will only see if using this uh, layer, only that polygon. But also something which is really nice is, is that I can update this in a new layer. So it will create a new layer with this polygon only. So 
now that we have answered a question, if there was some brownfield site within our uh, site, I can also, let's say my colleague Jason was asking this and I need to, I will mention here so he can know that the question is answered. You can put a comment. And answer this. And it's this polygon. So he can know, and I make sure that he will come back to our map and see that this is the polygon that we are talking about, that is Brownfield's uh, land within our site. And also, I can also share this map with different people by adding their emails or just copy the link under different privacy permissions, like as I did with you. So you can all get access to this map by getting the URL and then you can go to a map and see all that is happening here. So after we have answered this, well, if you can see here, we've got the brownfield land filter with only this uh, polygon. And also there is the other layer that was the intersection between our brownfield land it has a filter, so I need to remove uh, that brownfield land and our site. So that question was answered. And let's come back so I can show you other tools that felt has after we have answered this question. I will go to this link. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, of the, the map part. Uh, if you duplicate this map, you will get access to this map so you can revisit this later. Maybe you can see the recording plus the map and you can follow the instructions. So I think it's very useful for you to uh, duplicate this map. So let's go to this other map that I prepared for this session where I'll be talking about uh, external collaborations on like how you can share maps to with your clients. So there is the case number two, it's about a communication. And let's say you are working with the same site as we had before that we were looking for brownfield land. But now that you need to prepare a map or like a, a presentation for a client of a relation project that you, you let time ago. So again, we're using Eliza Morrison material to reproduce this as a, as a nice example. And then what you will need to cover or like at the outline, let's say for your presentation will be, okay, let's bring context to this, how we can move from the city to the site and from the site to the city. And for that, we will not use the summit styling um, tools that felt has. Secondly, let's say you need to do a historical development of the area, how the development, how the area look like, like a decade, decades, ago so we'll bring some uh, photographs aerial imagery uh, for you to contextualize this and then we will show this like a massive proposal with the proposal buildings and even we will bring an explanatory video uh, on our map that will be a youtube link that you can share with your map and you can watch this directly with your map so let's get started with the context how you can contextualize a site with with what is around this. So first of all, this is our site boundary. And if you see, if you zoom into, zoom into this map, you will notice that when I move in and out, I can con easily contextualize what is happening next to my site. So if I go, if I zoom out, I have these polygons, which are like a, almost transparent, but when I zoom in, they, are now like a, they turn into like a black, like a full black, which is very nice for contextualizing. So you have only your boroughs, and when you zoom out, you have your uh, boroughs, like uh, just for context, and also the boroughs where my site is uh, are in in yellow. So this is like a really nice uh, tool that uh, Felt has, which allows you to do some base style. Uh, based on the zoom that you are using, right? So let's take the London boroughs as an example. So in this case, what I've done 
is that I can set a color and also transparency based on the zoom style on the zoom level that I'm using. So in this case, I'm using this like a transparent gray with transparency as you hear, as you see uh, here when I'm at this zoom level, but when I zoom in, it gets like a darker, like some kind of like a black. And you can manage this here. So let me just change this for example. If I change this to blue, but I want to also change the transparency of this, I can change this here. So in this case, we will transition from this light uh, blue or light blue to the black when I zoom in and out. And once we are here, what I would like to show is that Let's say you want to contextualize your site with this historical, uh, like a context. So you can bring easily images like from your desktop. And let's say we want to bring another one to contextualize this, like from an aerial view of the site. So like this, you just drag and drop your image just for context. And let's say you also want to have some kind of annotation with text that explains what was happening at this point uh, in this area. So you can put this annotation tool. You can also see which others we have, but I'm just like showing this for you, this for you for like a for context. With this text, I can just go here, copy and paste my text, command C, command B, and you can come here and you will have this map contextualized where you can just share your screen, have this image, and then also have this text for context. Let's say we are doing, and also you can group all this. If you go here, you can go to uh, groups here. So let's say we're grouping all these in late 1940. So when you turn on and off your groups, it will disappear. Let's say we're doing the same for the 2000s, with the same so you can easily contextualize your projects and your maps and for more recently the 2020 with the same where you have a location where the image was taken from with different tools that you can do this just for context let's say you are putting there where the image was taken and said that let's say you bring your the proposal to your map is being loaded here. Let's say you bring your proposal as a, a PNG. In this case, it was a PNG that I just drag and drop to my map on top of my map, and then I just located this as part of my of my boundary. So let's say you also want to show like a, which are the buildings that you uh, were working on while developing this project, and which is very nice here is that if you, you, you are creative, you can have multiple ways of showing your work. Let's say we press here and I added this image and also like a text uh, uh, for this, like a polygon. And you can do is, this is very easily by doing this. You can go here and then you can create like a polygon where you can zoom in, create a polygon just on top of your image, double click, and then you will get this polygon. And if you're here, you can upload an image that will bring you to, uh, to browse within your computer. I just open this, and then I will have my image. And also I can have a description for this. So let's come here. I have this text. This is the Cooper Box Arena. Just copy the text. Come from here. I have a description, and this is the Cooper Box Arena. And then what we you will have here is that the same as we had for this other polygon, where you click here, and then you have like an image with all uh, your text. And what I have here is also that I have like a, a number that 
allows you to recognize which building is the one that we are using. So I can copy and paste this and bring this on top of my polygon. I can change the color here. So you have this information, which is basically a sort of geolocated workspace where you can bring your plans, where you can bring images, text, even you can bring YouTube links uh, to your map that let's say we can go to YouTube. And here you can look for any YouTube link. So let's say we're using this one. We just get a URL and then you can come back to your map, copy and paste, and it will immediately recognize that this, this is a YouTube link that you can even watch on top of your map. Okay, so I think this is like a most of I want to cover today. So Naila, if you, I think we can start with the Q&A, but most of the thing that I would like to show is this, which is basically how felt is like a perfect tool for you to work with different scales. You can visualize different stuff using different scales. At the same time, you can have different workflows because you can work on this on like a presentation, but also contextualize your project and easily share your project with clients, colleagues, and more. And also our commenting tools, which are this one, where you can add different collaborators or even clients to, to comment on your map. And also our sharing options, which are very easy to use. So I think this was most of the content I wanted to share. And maybe we can start now with the Q&A, Naila, if you want. Excellent, Juan. Thank you so much for the insightful presentation of the beginning and this super detailed practical tutorial. So in the beginning of your presentation, we saw that urban practitioners work at different scales, workflows, and communication patterns, and they're often disconnected and disintegrated, and you're looking to integrate them. And we really saw how, yeah, um, user-friendly it all was. Uh, we already have a bunch of questions in the Q&A section. Um, some of them have already been answered by Anna, who's supporting in the mm -hmm. answering them textually. Uh, but I will give you, Juan, here some of the questions that are most upvoted. Um, so to start with, how how would felt compared to some industry standard platforms like ArcGIS from Esri? And also to bind it with another question, um, maybe related to QGIS. So someone is also asking, felt does not have the information itself. You need this information from GIS or municipal information because you integrated it with QGIS. So can you expand on, on this, on the integration? Yeah different tools about the first one um so about how felt compares to other alternative yes alternatives first i would like to say that felt is like a gis platform of course it is but it's much more than that as you have seen now like you can you you can use gis uh, shape files geojson and more but you also have like a dozens of other like a tools that can help you to annotate on your map bring like a video, images, and more. And if I answer specifically your question, I think the main differences are that, and also it's what our customers say, is that felt is much more friendly. So basically, if you are a GIS expert, you can use felt for your work, you can bring your shape files, shape files and more. But if you haven't heard about GIS at all, or you are like a beginner, or it's your first time, into this world, you can also use that because it's very easy to use, user-friendly and more. And also another point, and I, I hope you notice this, 
is that it's very powerful. And also the way that you can upload data on your map is very quick and it takes just like a, a few seconds to upload there. So that's our, like, I think the main differences from that differentiate felt from other alternatives. Great. And Another... about the second, yeah. sorry, about QGIS and yeah, I, I'm not sure if I got this right, but basically as a GIS platform, it works in two ways. One is that you can upload data from different like a part. It can be a planning authority portal. It can be a file that you have a, in, in a folder in your computer and more, or you can create data. That are the two ways that you can work with geospatial data, like in general terms, obviously. And with FELT, you can do both. You can upload data, as I showed you before. It can be from a URL, from a file, uh, and another, another like a format. And also, you can create, you can map while using FELT and create like a new geospatial layer. I didn't show this like specifically, but if you go to our YouTube uh, channel, you can look for that. Excellent. Um, another very upvoted question was, I'm saying textually, and maybe I can rephrase as well, can felt be utilized in different, less advanced countries? And I would rephrase to add maybe less advanced means a place where you don't have enough open source data, um, such as you would have in London. That's how I understand the question. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Like, it obviously the data from public authorities is like a one part of this but also we all know that there exists osm which is open map services there are like a hundred or thousand of data uh, for different countries and we also have some videos about that or we're releasing like a few others like how you can get data from osm open map services uh, to bring into your um, into on your map and also, we also have some other series where you can get uh, interesting resources like for GIS portals around the world as the World Atlas of GIS that I showed you before and that the link is on your map. So please duplicate that and go there. Super. I'm trying to catch questions that are both in the chat and in the Q&A, but I'm giving priority to the ones that are in the Q&A just because it's easier for us to manage. So if you have a question in the chat, please post it there. Um, going at the idea of working in 3D. So can you use uh, the workflow to work with Google Earth 3D? Does Felt recognize 3D or is it 2D only? Uh, it is 2D only. However, uh, basically when you have like a, a 3D polygon, it's it's because it has like a, a value, a field which has attached data on on height, right? So it can be like a field which is height and then it has a number. And obviously if you have that, you can bring this data to your map and you, you can create, let's say a height map for like a building heights uh, using 2D uh, data. Or you can also use QGIS for these purposes, there are like a few plugins that allow you to plot a uh, height data or like a number as a 3D uh, format. And something which is very nice, and as I showed you before, we have a really nice integration between Felt and QGIS. So you can use these powerful tools from QGIS, but if you want to share your work, you can use Felt for these purposes. Super, answering everything, just <laughs> the right amount of information. Uh, Anna is also adding some links for everyone who has very, very specific functional questions. Another upvoted question for you, Juan, is can you do any statistics and Excel-like diagrams with FELT? Um, yeah, you have. So if you go to FELT, let me show you uh, something. Let me one second. I'm just preparing the map for this. So what you can do here, let me show you uh, my screen. 
So let's say we have this in my screen, right? If you can confirm, Naila. Yes. Okay, so in terms of statistics, what you can do in field, I, I will explain both what you can do in field in, in QES. So you have a layer that obviously, if you go to the table, it has, sorry, this one is uh, my side. Let me use the brown field line. So let's use this one. So if you go to the table, every shapefile, geo package or whatever, that uh, any like a layer that has a spatial data will have like a table like this where all the data is stored. And basically what felt does is a way that you can visualize this spatially. So if you go here and then you select a field, let's say we're using the number of hectares, and you go here, it will show you how the data is, uh, let me use this one, how the data is uh, spread. So in a way it's, it is show, showing you this map is like a kind of histogram. It's not the best example, but I prefer to show is that it, it will show you where is the data and what are what's the range between all the sites that we have here. So it goes from zero in terms of hectares to 188, and then you can visualize all the data here as an histogram, which is basically the numbers that you have in your table uh, here as a histogram. And this is the same way as QES does, you can, go here you can go to your styling options see a histogram in qis as well or in qis there are also another plugins that help you to plot histograms like a more professional where you will get a url and then you can plot uh, the data basically as graphs or or more super Juan, we'll try to squeeze in a couple more questions. There's a lot more than we can answer now, actually, but I will leave those that can be responded through um, extra links or viewing your website. I will leave them out for now, but there's an upvoted yeah. question that seems interesting for the community here. So can this tool be used for community engagement and public feedback because a lot of urbanists work with community engagement? And I will try to uh, keep a part at the end for um data and uh data security and and the collaborative aspect of this so if you can answer the first part of community engagement and then we'll start wrapping up okay let me answer this question by like showing this map so let's say you are planning yeah uh let's say you have i think this map is better for this so we have our proposal for a master plan in our hamlet and yeah, hopefully we can get this type of work, which is pretty nice. But let's say we are we're the authors of this project and we have this proposal, this master plan, and we want to collect feedback from a community. Basically, what Feld has is that it has these sharing options. And what you can do here is that you can create URLs that you can share with different people. And obviously, you don't want people to see more than you are like a setting at the beginning. So Felt has different sharing options that goes from none, which is basically no one can see this map more than the people which is added as collaborators. Or you can share your map for three different like a privacy options. The first one is anyone that has this URL can view this map, but they cannot comment. So it won't work for a, for like a community development or for getting feedback for from like for a proposal. But if you go here for with view and comment, anyone that get access to this URL can get feedback, uh, can add a comment and say, okay, I like this building. And you can open this like to your community and more. And something which is really nice is that you can go here and then you can download your comment as, as a CSV so you can get the analytics afterwards. So you can download all the comments you've got for these different uh, buildings and then you can analyze that and get feedback in terms of get feedback from your community basically. And the final option is this one, which is more for people which is collaborating with you. So if you go here and to view, comment and edit, and you get this URL, basically you can edit my map. And this is obviously for people uh, working close together with you. And in terms of uh, privacy, as you said, like uh, 
we have this SOC2 certification, which is, we can also add this like uh, in, in, the, in the chat. Maybe Anna can uh, add this in, in the chat. So basically it's the most, like uh, one of the most like uh, common um, privacy options for like uh, that data. So basically we have like uh, the most, uh, basically it's like uh, about that anyone that get access to your map the data stands there, and this cannot be extracted uh, from for other purposes because this SOC two uh, certification is one of the most important, and will get your like uh, data just for you, and you cannot get access if you are not uh, using it for other purposes. That's great. And the final question: Is there a certain limitation on storage, or and where does all the comments uh, and the collaborative information that you put in where does it get stored? So is it get stored in the cloud or a specific layer? Yeah, it's all stored in in the cloud. And about uh, the licenses that we have, we have four type of licenses or subscriptions. So basically, the first one is for free. And you can get a sense on what felt can do. Obviously, you have restrictions is there in terms of that you cannot use more than the five layers on your map, upload five layers on your map. You have a uh, data storage this restriction and more. Uh, but you can create like a, as many maps as you want. So you can try that and see like a, what felt can offer. And then we have other two, three uh, licenses. The second has uh, 500 megabytes of data storage. So this is like at the limit. It has all other other tools as well. The third one is like uh, you have 10 gigabytes of storage. And then also you have access to a special analysis tools and more. And we have finally or like enterprise accounts, which are for like a companies, like a bigger companies that they need more customized requirements. But also, maybe Anna can put the link to our pricing page, which is felt.com slash pricing, where you can get all access to all this information. And if you have more questions, you can also uh, send us an email. Excellent. And as a reminder to everyone who registered to this event, even if people did not attend uh, the, the webinar, we will send the recording and we will send useful links and any extra information. So Anna will take care of make we'll make sure that you get all the information you need. So now our webinar is coming to an end. So thank you, Juan Pablo, for answering all the questions so thoroughly and for your excellent presentation and the detailed tutorial. Um, we hope it's been of interest for everyone. And before um, saying goodbye, we'd be very happy if you could give us a feedback on this two minute survey that you that you will see in the chat. Um, I'll also share again the link to felt. Um, so we were really, really happy to have you Juan and to have everyone more than 200 people joining today. Um, and it was it was really nice to have you all join on this collaborative map and, and for you to see live what what felt can do. So as I said, we'll send a follow up email with the recording, uh, all the information you need. And we hope you enjoyed the session. Juan, thank you very much. Um, we're happy to uh, follow up uh, with any question you have. You can reach out to us directly at All Things Urban or at Felt through our social media, by email, and we're happy to open up future collaborations. So thank you, Juan. Thank you, yeah, Thank you. Thank you, Naila, Anastasia. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. And yeah, I will like encourage you to use like a felt. Please go to the map. You can duplicate that, and then you can get access to both like the recording and this map, so you can follow the steps. That will be uh, very nice. And yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Hope you enjoyed this. And I'm I'm sure that felt will be like uh, this all-in-one tool for all of you urban practitioners. So many thanks. Thank you, Juan. Thank you, everyone. And wherever you are in the world where you're joining us, have a great evening, a great morning, a great day. And we hope to see you around soon. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye.